The testimony of our life is overdue now. Um, it's been a long time since um, I was wanting to share um, our life journey as a testimony here. Um, praise and glory to be um, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, some of you do know our life journey, um, some don't. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Lord Jesus Christ and our pastors, Pastor Reba and Joshua, um, for all the blessings they have been for our family. We are saved, we are happy, we are prosperous, we are successful, we are in peace. Because of Lord Jesus Christ, who has worked through them, I've been, whenever I meet with them, whenever I spend time with them, I used to say this repeatedly, that you both are planted here for families like us, which is true, um, otherwise we wouldn't have been in this position today. Um, for those who don't know, I, I would like to tell what we have been through. Um, in 2004 and 2005, I was um, in the training um, in my medical career at Airedale. Uh, Louise and Richard used to give a lift to attend the Bible studies uh, conducted by Pastor Eber. And I, I used to regularly attend on uh, um, when, until I was working at Airedale, and then because of my career, I moved down south. I lost uh, the contact until we came back in 2008 um, because I was wanting to come back to Airedale. Um, but, and uh, by that time, I was married, um, and we were expecting our first child. Um, and in 2009 Easter holidays, we went back to India when Evangeline, my wife, was pregnant with my first son, Samuel. Um, she was um, about seven or eight weeks pregnant, um, and she, she, was contra uh, she was affected by rubella. Um, rubella is a virus, um, some of you would know, just to keep it in brief. Um, if rubella affects a pregnant lady in the first trimester of life, uh, first trimester of baby's life, uh, which is the first three months of pregnancy, the baby will be affected um, um, in in lot of ways. Baby can be blind, baby can be deaf, baby can have learning disabilities, baby can have uh, problems in the brain, growth, development. Every single organ can be affected. Um, Baby can have problems in the heart, breathing, everything. Um, the baby can have one of the problem or all of the problems mentioned. Um, so, because I am, um, I am a doctor and I've been in this um, in this field for almost eighteen years now, um, so I know the risks. Um, and the consultants who treated Evangeline at that time, we were in India at that time, um, she was admitted to hospital because she had complications of rubella. Um, she had encephalopathy, um, that means um, the brain functions are affected and she was bed bound. Um, we were advised to terminate um, and that seemed very sensible for me as well. And when I shared it with Evangeline, she was, she, she, she was not happy to terminate the child. And then I, I started praying. So when I prayed, God, rem God reminded me of what me and Evangeline discussed um, the day when we first met, um, when we decided to get married. We, we named our first son as Samuel. We, we, did, we, we were not married, we didn't have a child at that time, but still we named our first child Samuel and we decided that we will uh, grow that child in the glory of Lord and, f and we, will, we will not decide for him and God will decide for him. And God reminded me of what we discussed and he said, I don't have any say in any decisions I make in Samuel's life. So I had to step back 
uh, because I, I, I had to honor what God has reminded me. So we took the faith and we kept the child. I lost a lot of my um, doctor friends because uh, in their eyes, we were foolish. Um, we came back. Um, we, we, we didn't have contacts with our pastors. Uh, we were attending another church at Airedale. Um, baby was born. Um, baby didn't pass the hearing test. And the first few scans in the brain did have a report that um, there were problems in the brain. Um, he did have a retinitis and inflammation in the retina, which is the back part of the eye, which, uh, which deals with the vision perception, which takes the information to the brain. He did have a hole in the heart. Um, he did have deranged liver functions. Um, so every single um, medical problems mentioned because of rubella was there in the initial tests. Um, two months later, uh, he did have a formal hearing test at Bradford uh, that confirmed Samuel had profound by, um, hearing loss in both ears. Um, in simple terms, baby is deaf. Um, six months down the line, um, me and Evangeline were very depressed, very sad, very stressed. There was no peace. Um, I, I'll go to work in the morning, come back in the evening, um, and Evangeline will be crying, having baby in the lap, and then I join her, um, and we, used, we just prayed for the first six months after Samuel was born to show the right church where we can build our family again uh, and to get out of the situation. So we, we just prayed for the right church for the first six months. And, um, and I, I, rem I thankfully remember the sister in Christ, Rohini, who um, Louise know. She called me one day and she said, um, did you not know uh, Pastor Eba and Joshua started a church in Skipton? I immediately said, we will go there from now on. And we started attending the church um, at um, High Con Mill. Um, and since then, they are walking with us in this journey, in our life, uh, being there for us, and have been a blessing for us. So Samuel, when they, f when they first met Samuel, Samuel, by six months down the line, didn't have head control. He was, when you, held, when you lift the child, his head will be hanging down. Um, and he was floppy, he had laryngomalacia, which is a condition where whenever the child breathes, takes one breath in, there will be a, a croaky noise, which means uh, the baby's uh, breathing is not regularized. Um, and he did have the hole in the heart, and all the scanned reports were there. Um, and we used to have at least four appointments every week in four different hospitals. And it was a very, very difficult time, and I, was, I started training to be a GP at that time. I, ch I changed from training to be a physician to a, a, to gen a general physician so that I can stay in one place to look after Evangeline, Samuel, and my family. Otherwise, uh, traveling around will be very difficult to meet the needs of the family. Um, I said depressed, it's a simple word, but actually I was hearing voices. Um, I was hearing voices which was telling me to end it all, to jump from something or you name it, I was hearing. So I called Pastor Iba, shared what I was going through and the voices I was hearing. Um, she came the very, the very day, she prayed over me. Um, she casted out all the voices I was hearing. She anointed me with the oil. We were living at uh, the flats at Airedale Hospital. I still remember the place where I was prayed over. And since then, it's been eight and a half years, I don't hear the voices. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, since they both came into our life, God started working. Um, in our life and there is no turning back um, and I still remember 
whenever pastor prayed over Samuel, um, she said there is nothing missing, there is nothing lacking, and his progress is unstoppable. And that is true now, but the professionals whom we met, um, the local authorities sent um, the teacher of the deaf and multisensory teachers and the educational psychologist and, uh, and a team of uh, speech and language therapists, you name it, they all started visiting our home and nobody gave um, a positive um, insight into Samuel's progress uh, because of uh, number one rubella and the deafness and the delayed more motor skills and his delayed developmental milestones. Um, people who were there since those days will know what child uh, Samuel was when we first brought him. Um, and you can see the difference now. I don't have to say it. You can see it for yourself. Um, so, but I didn't believe any of those professionals' words. Me and Evangeline, we didn't believe. We believed what God had to say for him, but we had to have the support through Pastor Reba and Josh walking with us to build that confidence and the faith in us. Um, so um, for the scan appointments, for the appointments at Bradford, either Pastor Reba or Joshua will be with us, will be praying with us, and we were attending the appointments. Um, and I was prog I was training to become a GP, so I had issues in my training, and I still remember an incident when me and my trainer, uh, he, I was I did my third year of my uh, GP training at um, one of the GP surgeries at, in Keithley. Um, he was very supportive, um, but me and him had an understanding at one point that I had to have an appraisal annually, but in those days it has to be every six months for those who were in training. So, uh, because we didn't realize that we missed um, an appraisal which had to be done six months ago, so when I met with him, I ha we both had an email and a call from postgraduate dean that we missed an appraisal which should have been done six months ago. I was, we were going through this journey, um, so I had a lot of commitments, and my appraiser had a different understanding. Um, but, the, but the team was very supportive. However, the software where we had to uh, incorporate all these details the machine, the computer don't understand our position. So the st software was not allowing us to do both the appraisals together uh, because it, can't, it, it, it was able to recognize the present. It wasn't allowing us to do something which should have, we should have done in the past. We were trying to do two, six, two appraisals in one go, which the postgraduate dean did give a permission, but if the software doesn't allow, we can't submit to the central agency in London. So, we, we, the, my appraiser walked out of the room because we both didn't know what to do. Um, that means my training will be delayed and I had to have an extension, so I rang Pastor Reba, she prayed over. Um, it will be a surprise um, if, I, if I had to tell, uh, after the prayer, the software opened, the machine <laughs> opened its doors, <laughs> praise the Lord, and we were able to do we were able to complete both the appraisals and the software recognized it didn't happen before, it hasn't happened after to anybody else other than for me. Um, so I, I completed my training uh, and we went to Pastor Reba and Josh and we were asking what to do with Samuel uh, because he, he was progressing, his motor skills came back, it can, head control, it can, he had his head control. Um, his vision was okay, um, the hole in the heart closed, um, but his hearing is not restored. So they advised us to um, go for um, healing ministries. So we started um, taking Samuel to all possible healing um, ministries, all rev the revival meetings, um, and I used to I had some savings and I used to, every single healing, healing ministry I went, I used to take my checkbook out and my pen out 
um, and I, I will ask the Lord to give a, a guidance. Is this the ministry? Do I need to serve? God said no. So I would have asked three or four in four meetings. I've asked God didn't allow me to sow the seed and, and done uh, one Bible study on a Thursday evening when I was attending um, the meeting at Christ Tower's Church. I very well remember when I asked the Lord on that Thursday evening, is this the right ministry? Do I have to sow my savings? God said yes. And I immediately came after the meeting. I went to Pastor Reeb and I, and I told what God told me in that meeting. That this is the place God is asking me to sow. And I did. Um, and I saw that seed I, I saw. In, in, I named it for Samuel and for his progress. Um, in 2012, Samuel had cochlear implant surgery. Pastor Reba was there. Um, but before that, we went to South Africa twice for the um, Christ Embassy Healing School. Um, guess what? Pastor Reba came with us. She was pregnant with Cyrus. She left Abel and Joel with Pastor Josh, and she traveled with us. She was there. She attended the healing school with us for two weeks. She prayed with us. She walked with us. She supported us. Um, we got the Rema word um, when we were praying together that Samuel's ears will be open. He will speak. He will hear. He will listen. We took um, that word for our life and we came back. Uh, Pastor Iba came back and he had the operation. Not all children who had cochlear implant make the progress what Samuel has made. Um, and not all um, children who has the support make the progress. For, uh, some do. Uh, diligent parents here and there in the country do make it happen. So we, in the journey of a child with additional needs, it's not a battle just with the medical system, but with also for the right education. So the journey and the battle for his education started, for the right support in his education started. So we used to visit um, the centers all over the world for oral deaf education so that we can train Samuel to hear, listen, and speak using the implants he has got. We lived in uh, in Bradford Local Authority at that time, and there were a lot of pressures at that time to send him to signing deaf school, so that it's cheap for them, and there is a school already there in Bradford, so it'll be easy for the local authority to fit him in that box, so that he will be a signing deaf child. But the promise we had um, was Samuel will hear, listen, and speak well, and do well in education. Um, but all the teachers who supported in the early years uh, did say the speech may not be good. Um, the children, deaf kids can't do well in um, numeracy. Uh, they can't do well in education. Um, but I didn't believe that. Um, I, I, I was searching for uh, the information um, for what to do uh, to for a deaf child to speak well, to learn well, and do well in education. Guess what? For all the meetings we had from 2012 until 2015, the tribunal we had um, at Burnley, Pastor Reba was there in every single meeting I had with the local authority, or with the school, or with the nursery school, or with the speech and language therapist. The answer were not yes. It wasn't easy. It wasn't, it wasn't favorable. But I had the support and I had the, the, the strength um, and the confidence to fight the system. So it, it doesn't, things doesn't get easier just because someone is a doctor or a solicitor. Thing, you, we all are treated equally by the local authority, which has a small purse. And so I. We, we, we did um, go to meetings, but we didn't get the favorable answers. However, Samuel was progressing well. There was a charity in Bradford for oral deaf education, which is closed now. Um, my wife used to take him in a taxi on a 
at, at least three times a week. Uh, she will, and, and there was a teacher who volunteered there to uh, train the kids to speak using the implants. Um, Evangeline will leave him in the nursery and she will stay in the top floor and she can watch from upstairs. And she, she brought him back home on a daily basis and she worked with him and we played with him and we started training him. Um, and it became very obvious that if he continued to live in Bradford, um, we had to send Samuel to a signing deaf school. But we didn't want to do that. So we, we shared that with Pastor Reba and guess what? Samuel started Lancashire Bridge School. That's where Abel and Joel first went. So they, they were holding hands with us, walking with us in this journey. I qualified as a GP and I had an opportunity to take a job anywhere in the UK where I can get better support because it's a postcode lottery. Um, if, we, if I work the system better, if I had moved to Birmingham, I can get speech and language therapies free of charge on a weekly basis provided by the NHS. If I had moved to Reading or Portsmouth, there is an oral deaf school for deaf children, and they will train us, and it's free of charge. I could have got that. So I had a lot of options on the table, but I didn't want to, me and my wife, we both didn't want to move far away so that we don't miss the ministry where we get the food for our spirit. So we didn't want to go but we didn't want to give up on his education or his progress. But we decided um, the support we had and the support the Lord has provided through them is vital. If we lose that, we will go down. No matter what progress Samuel is making in the worldly realm, he, he will make progress because that's what the promise for his life was and that's what he was prophesied over by the pastors that's what the rema word we got from lord jesus christ so he will progress but we still we were not operating at the level that we would be able to um, move out of this ministry move out of this the, the right word we have been preached over we've been trained and the peace we have, we we have, uh, we were able to establish in our family. We, I couldn't compromise that. So I decided that I will, I will work somewhere here and there locally, and we will bring all the support which any other child in UK would get for Samuel wherever we live. So we started having private teachers of the deaf, private speech and language therapists. So all my yearnings was going for Samuel's education alone. Um, and Samuel was making progress and we were at Lancashire Bridge. Um, we, well, I was looking for a house, um, again another miracle. Um, the lady who came to show the flat um, in Lancashire Bridge, it was on the second floor, no lift. Um, and Samuel was running, he was three and a half year old and he was running around. So it will be very difficult to lift all the Asian stuff, the groceries we have, to lift um, every single week up and down stairs. And with the running child, we, we may have complaints from uh, people who are living downstairs. So, but the, it, that was in the catchment area for that school because it's a newly built school with good acoustics so that he can hear better. Um, but I was hesitating when that lady was showing the house and she asked me one question. What is the reason for your move from uh, Bradford area to uh, Lancashire? And I told the reason, to, I want this school for my son because it's better for his hearing. Um, and she said, give me some time to think. I live in a house um, and I, 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 I haven't decided to move into this flat, but um, I, give me some time to think. And two days later, guess what? The lady who lived in her house, she asked us to come and live in her house so that she will move to the flat. There was no, yeah, she didn't take a deposit. She didn't ask for references. She didn't ask for more money. The, the house was bigger than the flat and there was a parking space with the garden. The rent was the same for the flat and for the house. 
Four years. Amen. Four years we lived in the house. It was a blessing. And uh, the, in those two days when that lady was deciding, I called Pastor Reba. And I told the situation. She said, doors will be open. It did. Um, so four years we were living at Lynch Bridge. Uh, one year in, at his nursery and uh, reception year one and year two. In that journey, um, we, t we kind of secured some support for Samuel's education. However, it wasn't quantified or specified enough that I wanted to see in the um, statement for him. So we had several meetings with local authority um, at Lancashire. And it, at every single meeting we had, Pastor Eba was there to pray over. Uh, but the answer was no. So we both decided that the only way is to go to tribunal. Um, the solicitors quoted quite a lot of fees. So, uh, so I, I, I didn't have finances at that time because we had to pay for the witnesses we had. Um, and we, ha we were uh, educating him privately with all the, uh, the salary I had. So for a, for a barrister or a solicitor fees, the quotation was around 10,000 pounds per day for the hearing. I didn't have that. So it was in 2004 Christmas time, I shared that with Pastor Reba. So we were praying about it. And God, uh, through another parent, suggested a lady who is not a trained solicitor. However, she is a parent of a child with special needs in London. And she charged not even one-tenth. She charged around 700 pounds. She did all the paperwork. She came for the hearing. And that was the right choice because she knew what to work in the system. The day of hearing, Pastor Reba came. She prayed. We were waiting to enter into the room. But she had a call and she had to leave. So um, Evangeline was supposed to come with me to support me in the tribunal, but Samuel became ill the day before. He had a very high temperature. She had to stay back with him. So I was, I was going, but Pastor Reba was coming, and I had that support. And she prayed with my witnesses, but she had to go. So I went into the tribunal room. The panel wasn't... Uh, there were two in the panel, the judge, and, the, and, the, and an education specialist. The local authority representative, the manager, she was seasoned in the tribunals. She knew what to work through. She knew what to say. She, she was doing it day in and day out for an umpteen number of years, and that was first for me. Even though I know my son's case in and out, the evidences I had, I knew the bundle, which was thousand-page bundle. I knew the nook and corner, every single thing. I am not a tribunal seasoned professional. So um, uh, for half of the hearing, I couldn't even open my mouth. I was just watching the arguments going on between here and there. And the, and the judge was very cold towards, towards me. That's how I felt and towards my witnesses. And when the crucial arguments came about three points in, in his statement about um, what kind of teaching assistant he should have, what kind of support he should have during lunchtime and break times, and what type of support he should have in terms of speech and language therapy, the judge raised his hand and stopped my witnesses from speaking. And he was ready to take all the uh, evidences given by the local authority professionals, and he was stopping my side throughout. <coughs> But thankfully, one of my witnesses had worked for tribunal for 10 years, and she knew the tribunal procedure, and she was in the panel for 10 years. She felt that this is illegal. What the, what the judge was doing is illegal. So she said she's going to give a, a feedback to the tribunal head in London, the, the approach or the mannerism of the judge. So I came back and I called one of the parents, Pastor Reba and Josh came that evening and we discussed what happened at the tribunal and I did say to them, uh, it, didn't, it wasn't in our favor, the hearing wasn't in our favor at all. Um, so I have nothing to lose. So we decided that I will also give a constructive feedback to the tribunal head in London. 
um, the the verdict of a, a special education needs tribunal hearing will not be issued the same day. It takes two weeks and it comes on an email. So because I had nothing to lose, I also submitted a, a constructive feedback explaining um, what I was trying to achieve, at least a fair hearing, at least my voice is heard, at least my witnesses are heard. Um, at least if that has happened, I can take a no as a no. But if 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 nobody has heard what I was, what we were trying to say, um, everything was written in the paper. So I submitted a feedback, and my witness submitted her feedback. So I had evidences to prove that the tribunal hearing wasn't fair. Judgment came two weeks later. Guess what? We got all we asked for. Every all the three points we asked for, we got it. So, amen. God's hand was in favor of us, and they both were there for us until that day. Um, Samuel was doing really well at Lancashire Bridge School, but I did feel that the 30 children classroom was, um, was not 100% helpful for Samuel's hearing. If, if the teacher was saying harsh, he will hear as house because it's a subtle change and when the whole class was speaking, it was difficult for him. So even though he was, by the time he had made progress, he, when he started Lencher Bridge, he had few words to say when other children were writing and speaking. Um, by year two, Samuel um, was in one of the top 10 in a, 30, in a 30 children class. And the teachers were passing comments that he is able to do even more better, but the whole class with the 30 children class, with that machine he has got, he is mishearing some of those, and that is affecting his learning. So I was working in Keithley. I was commuting from Lancia Bridge. So I was praying for a job, and I was I was uh, I was trying to look for other schools which would be able to cater Samuel's needs. Um, and one day in 2005, um, when I was when we were coming as a family entering the church in Skipton, Brother David came and. And he said, God wants me to share something. He's going to open a new door. You will get a new job. Um, and that will be a blessing for you. And I was in a dilemma. I had two jobs at that time in an interview. And, I, and through Brother David, um, he blessed me. And I knew what he was saying. So I accepted a job in Clitheroe. And there was a school near Clitheroe, which is an independent mainstream school, which is newly built with good acoustics and a class size of 8 to 10. But they are not deaf school, however it's a mainstream school, but it's a private school. The fees per annum for that school is around £11,000. Um, if I had to pay, I had to pay that school fees which is £11,000, the teaching assistant salary is another £18,000, and the specialist teacher will cost another £15,000, and the private speech and language therapist will cost me around £100 per session. Even if I put all my salary together, I won't be able to meet what he, what is ideal for Samuel. Um, but the thing is, it's not doable. Um, so I discussed again with Pastor Reba, um, and I said, this is the situation. I won't be able to pay for all those even though I am in the higher tax paying band based on my salary, my take home is next to nothing. It just meets what is needed for us. And we were able to get the private teachers for him, but not the school, not the teaching assistant full time. So, um, but guess what? The doors opened, all the evidences from the school he was attending, Lanche Bridge School, his teachers, his teaching assistant there, his specialist teacher, everybody who came from local authority said, Samuel needs a small size class with good acoustics. So I didn't have, even though I had three independent professionals in my pocket after ransacking all over the country, I had witnesses, I had reports ready to discharge because I planned this journey 
Um, God gave us the wisdom to plan the journey, but I didn't have to use any of those. When the local authority came and tested the school, it turned out to be the best listening environment, and they themselves said, this is the right school for Samuel. I didn't have to do, a, I didn't have to put a counter argument for that. And the question about traveling from Lynch Bridge to that school was nullified because I had a job in Clitheroe and that school was five minutes away. So even if we lived at Lynch Bridge, that 40 minutes journey will be covered by myself. So the local authority couldn't argue that point. And this uh, teacher of the deaf who came from the local authority is deaf herself and she's cochlear implanted. She was struggling to hear when she sat in Samuel's classrooms when she was listening to the teacher. And she put it in writing that it is difficult even for me as a 60 year old who has been in a hearing and listening world for the past 60 years. Uh, and my language is far more advanced than a child who is learning to learn the language. So if, it, if I find it difficult, Samuel will find it very difficult to make the progress he is supposed to make. So she put it in writing. And the speech and language therapist who came from NHS, she also said the same. So every single local authority nominated professionals said what is needed for Samuel. There was no door. There was nothing, no obstacle, nobody was blocking the journey. And I, I, by that time I knew what points on law I can argue on. So we lodged tribunal number two, even though the local authority, despite seeing all the witnesses, refused to name that school. So the hearing was impending in um, two years ago, um, sometime in July. And we, we were expecting our second child. Samuel was asking for, a, for another child. He was praying diligently for many years because everybody has siblings and he doesn't have. And God blessed us with the, with the second child. So a, a delivery, which is another emergency section. Um, and my parents, uh, but in this journey, our parents were able to come. Evangelines and my parents alternated to support us. Tribunal. And I had to, I had another training for diabetes. I was progressing in my career, an exam for diabetes. So there were a lot of boxes to tick in 2017. Um, baby was born, there was no problem with the second child. We had the right consultant, we had the right surgery, we had the right support, the right team, Airdale. All the doors were open for the second child. So we came home with the baby and then I started the journey for the second tribunal. Before the hearing, local authority agreed to name um, the school which we wanted, and they agreed to pay the full fees, full teaching assistance fees, and full spe specialist teacher's fees, which, which comes to about 45,000 pounds per annum, which I cannot pay. But I was ready to negotiate half and half um, so that I don't let the school go, because that would be the right one for him. Um, so, but I didn't have to do any of those. All I had to do on writing, uh, in given writing is, I will provide the transport. That's all, because um, by law, if we push for that, the local authority had to pay another 20 pounds, 20,000 pounds from their pocket to arrange a taxi with an escort for a child to go to the right school for him. That's what the law says. I didn't push for that because I want to drop my child and pick him from school as a parent. And I was ready to negotiate the rest. But they didn't want any negotiation. All they want is, yes, you have the evidence. Don't ask for the transport. It will be too much from the person. They were ready to name the school and the rest of the support. So Samuel got the school and we were living at Lancher Bridge and I was working there. So two people were commuting from Lancher Bridge to Ribble Valley. So I started looking for houses in Ribble Valley to rent. Um, so the, the money I saved for the hearing, tribunal hearing, we had some money um, which didn't go into vain by paying a barrister or a solicitor or, a, or, a, or an expert witness, which would come around 15,000 pounds just for the day of hearing. Um, we, we, it didn't go in vain, we had it in the bank. Um, and Samuel started the school and I was looking to rent houses in that area. I visited two houses 
and I tried to negotiate with one of the house owners just for 50 pounds because he said he's going to provide a gardener who will charge us 100 pounds per month. And I felt that I can't afford to have a gardener, I'm not a millionaire. Per month paying 100 pounds was too much and I did say I know a lot of gardeners who can charge me less money, who will do the pristine job you want it and he will maintain the garden. But the owner said no, I came back shared this with pastors and I told my wife we are going to buy a house we are not going to rent guess what the first house on the first day we went and looked at the house we liked it but we didn't have the the deposit we had we need to have so but in that journey Lynn came for um, advice and wisdom every single support I had was from the church I didn't have to go anywhere um, the, for surveying the house, I asked Lynn. For the solicitor we had to use for the house, I asked Lynn's advice. I didn't have to search for any of those. I, it, it was, I was spoon-fed. See God's hand in everything. When his door is open, he opens every single door. And, and the, the, ma the gentleman who came, who came to survey the house, he said, in 10 years' time, he hadn't seen a pristine house like this. It's worth investing, he said. And the solicitor, he was a quick worker. He did all the work, but we need the money for deposit. Um, my parents are retired and they are wealthier than me. Um, they, they live in India and my mom has saved quite a lot of money but she has never given me anything I asked for. So when it came to, when, whenever it, when it came for Samuel's education, when we asked for tribunal hearing and we needed this money, um, my mom never released the finances. I'm sorry, the, the story is long, taking long, but it's worth telling. Um, um, so when I went for a house deposit, my mom, the first, I was praying about it. I rang my mom. The first word she said, I will give the money, buy the house. Wow. No questions. And we had the deposit without any problem because I already had some, which I didn't pay for the tribunal. So I had some, my mom gave some, and the solicitor worked within three weeks and we had, we were able to move into a house which I cannot work it in my human being's ability. It was provided by the Lord. Um, and we, within two weeks of him starting the new school, we were in the new house. And the owner there, he, he, had, he was single, he was very old, he had, he bought a lot of furniture just to take pictures so that he can sell the house in the market. And he, he gave all the new furniture for us. That again, a blessing. And we didn't have to pay for it. And that was another blessing. Um, while, while, while this was going on, Evangeline's dad had a very significant life-threatening emergency. His gallbladder burst and he was in an ITU in India. And, and we, we told, shared that with pastors, and we prayed, and I texted one of my friends who I, I was in touch with for 10 years. I texted my friend, and she asked a few questions. She asked me to send the scan details, and she said, this is the surgeon whom we can go for, um, and my, uh, my, my father-in-law was transferred to that hospital. He had the operation within a day or two. And the surgeon, uh, he got better, he came home, and the surgeon said, he's the leading surgeon in India who, has, who is pioneering in that field. And he said when he opened his abdomen, he was shell-shocked, he didn't know what to do because all the intestines was clogged over, the burst gallbladder. If he had to tease out one by one, he may damage one organ or the other. But nothing happened. God had his hand over his life and he and he, he had come since and he has stayed with us. He has come to the church. Amen. God brought us through every single journey. And you can see Samuel, he speaks well, he studies well, he does well at school where he is. And throughout this journey and the peace we are having now, God worked wonders, miracles. And because of the selfless sacrifice of what these two people have done, for, not for me, there are many other families who have walked with us in their life. And we want to give, thank you is a very, very small word. We are eternally grateful as a family for to, the, to these two people. 
unto the Lord for planting them here for families like me. Amen.